In the last tutorial, we had designed a halfway dipole and defined a discrete port for it. In this tutorial, I shall simulate the same halfway dipole that we designed earlier. I shall also discuss boundary conditions and mesh generation, which are two important topics. Now open the same file of the halfway dipole that we designed the last time. We had already defined the port, so let's now define the range of frequency of the simulation. Since the dipole resonates at 2 GHz, 0 to 3 GHz should be a reasonable range. Then you can select desired fields from field monitor. I am only interested in far field radiation pattern, but you can select more than that. At this point, I would like to throw some light on boundary conditions. Observe the dipole structure. It is bounded by a rectangular box. The simulation of the structure will be performed within the bounding box. This box has eight faces of planes, and you need to define boundary condition for each of these planes. One important thing I must mention that the range of the frequency of the simulation influences the volume of this bounding box. And the boundary conditions influence the number of mesh cells, which again influence the accuracy and the time of simulation. Therefore, there should be a harmony among all these factors. Now go to Solve menu and then select Boundary Conditions. The dipole is supposed to radiate electromagnetic wave within its bounding box, so make sure that open ID space is selected in each of the planes. Sometimes many structures can be embedded in electric or magnetic medium. Then you have to use electric or magnetic boundary conditions accordingly. Now let's talk about symmetry planes. The specification of each symmetry plane will save half of the simulation time. This figure can help you understand how to find out the symmetry planes. The electromagnetic radiation of the dipole is shown here. Magnetic field lines are drawn in red and electric fields in blue. Now carefully observe the orientation of the axis. The dipole is along z-axis and the other two axes are normal to it. Now for a while forget about the electric field lines and just consider the magnetic field lines. There are two planes which are perpendicular to the circular magnetic field lines. These are zx and yz plane. This implies that the magnetic field has no component tangential to these two planes I mean h of t is equal to zero in these two planes. Therefore, if you specify a plane, a symmetry plane in CST, the simulation will be limited to the symmetrical half of the actual structure. Thereby, you can significantly reduce the simulation time. That's an extremely powerful feature for speeding up the simulation, but be careful while determining the symmetry planes. If you select incorrect simulation plane, definitely you shall get error message. Alright, now let's consider the electric field lines and ignore the magnetic field. There is only one plane which is perpendicular to the electric field lines. And it is X-ray plane. It means the electric field has no component tangential to X-ray plane. So, you can specify XY plane as an electric symmetrical plane in CST. Let's go back to CST environment to set up the symmetry plane settings. Select magnetic for both YZ and XZ planes and electric for XY plane. Leave the other settings unchanged and press OK to finish. Now it's time to know about mesh generation. In a plane term, mesh is a fabric or grid that encompasses the simulation domain of a structure. When you complete 
a geometric construction and tell CST to simulate a structure. CST then discretizes the space in terms of reads and solves Maxwell's equation at each point in the grid. Therefore, it's very important that you set up a proper mesh to get accurate results. Remember, mesh settings always influence simulation accuracy and speed. Alright, now let's see the current mesh for the dipole. Go to Mesh menu and select Mesh view. This is the current mesh for this dipole. You can carry on and simulate the dipole with the default mesh settings, but you will definitely experience a very long simulation time. So, we shall modify the mesh settings to make simulation more accurate and fast. To change mesh settings, go to Global Mesh Properties from Mesh menu. The current mesh type is hexahedral. This is good for high frequency systems but not suitable for low frequency. Now come to the mesh density control. Lines per wavelength describes the number of time a plane wave is sampled. Give a value of 20 here. It means if a plane wave propagates along a coordinate axis, the wave will be sampled at least 20 times along that axis. Don't give too much large value because it will increase the mesh size unnecessarily and eventually it will elongate the simulation time. Now, the lower mesh limit defines the maximum mesh tape to be used for mesh generation. Give a value of 15 here. Mesh line ratio limit controls the ratio between the largest and the smallest mesh steps. Observe in the mesh summary, there are two parameters, minimum mesh step and maximum mesh step. If we divide the maximum by the minimum mesh step, the result will always be smaller than or equal to mesh line ratio limit. Too small value of this parameter will prevent the mesh from resolving small details of the structure. Hence, it can lead to inaccurate results. On the other hand, specifying very large values will generate unnecessary mesh detailing which will significantly affect the performance of the simulation. Therefore, give a moderate value of 30 here. Now, let's see the number of mesh cells at this moment. It's a large number and can affect the simulation speed. Now click on the spacious button and go to advanced tab, enable this option and press OK. Observe that the number of mesh cells has decreased and these three parameters nx, ny and nz represent the number of mesh lines along x, y and z axis respectively. Press OK to exit mesh settings window now. Remember, each geometric structure needs a proper mesh settings. You should never apply a mesh settings of a structure to another different structure. You will have incorrect results if you do that. If you are not an experienced user, you better stick with the default mesh settings. Now the structure is completely ready for the simulation. Go to Solve menu and select transient solver give a value of 73 ohms here because it's the theoretical input impedance of a half-wave dipole at resonance and press the start button to simulate the dipole after simulation you can check the return loss plot here is the return loss plot it's clear from the plot that this dipole antenna resonates at 2 GHz, which complies with the theoretical value. And that's the radiation pattern of a half wave dipole. It has a shape of a donut. That's all for today. I hope you will find this video useful. Thank you for watching.